In the high desert of southeastern Oregon, surrounding the towns of Paisley and Valley Falls, the Shewakan watershed is a unique closed basin system that is key to the prolific existence of many migratory birds, unique fish species, and other wildlife. This closed basin system is comprised of the upper Shewakan watershed, compiling water from a vast drainage, multiple creeks, and 53 miles of river. The lower Shewakan watershed begins just above the town of Paisley, stretches through the upper and lower marshes, and ends in Abert Lake. The upper watershed has recently sustained multiple megafires, which are devastating to the forests, wildlife habitat, soil, watershed tributaries, and the entire ecosystem. This damage to the ecosystem is expected to impact the entire watershed. In the Chuacan Basin over the last five years, we've had several fires that have impacted that watershed. First one being the Withers Fire uh, in 2016. Uh, was about 3,400 acres uh, burned just outside of Paisley. Uh, this, the next one was the Watson Fire just above Paisley uh, in 2018, uh, and it ended up being about uh, 59,000 acres. Um, the next one was the Ben Young Fire in 2020, which was up uh, the Shuacan drainage closer to uh, Dairy Creek, and it was only 1,200 acres. Then the next one, uh, in 2020 was the Bratton Fire, uh, which was right next to Paisley, and it ended up being uh, a little over 50,000 acres. Uh, and then last year, the Bootleg Fire uh, was 431,000 acres. Uh, and then later in the season last year, we ended up having the Cougar Peak Fire uh, at 92,000 acres. The fires in the last few years have, have grown and, and in a, at a rate that has been beyond anything we've experienced and the fire behavior is beyond anything we've experienced. When I first started my career, uh, plume-dominated fires were fairly a rare event, um, but in the last few years, all of these large fires have, have produced plumes that have controlled their own weather or produced their own weather, um, and in extreme cases, even dropping lightning out in front of itself uh, creating thunderstorms, creating their own winds, uh, generating their own weather patterns that, that increases the fire behavior and the, increases the amount in which these things are growing. When we have a high severity fire, it basically um, kills your overstory and your understory. And then um, after that, your understory will start to come in. You'll start getting grass and shrubs growing back. Generally, historically, it was a low intensity fire regime, and now they're burning high severity, so it's killing all of the ponderosa pine. So that is a tree species that does not naturally regenerate very well on its own. And so to regrow a forest, we need to basically do reforestation. And, and I would say that's one of the biggest concerns with all the mega fires that we've had in Lake County is the loss of forest cover across the county. And what that means for loss of timber production over time, loss of wildlife habitat, um, loss of you know, healthy watersheds. And the only way in most places to get that back is to invest in reforestation. So it just takes a very, very long time. I mean, we're talking decades before we get a forest back that's even remotely comparable to what we had before it burned. So when you look at the vegetation response, it's not good. Um, what happens? We lose, first of all, our really deep-rooted perennials. We're losing trees, obviously. Um, also, our sagebrushes are going. And that is a foundation of holding the soil together. We have um, thin soils, rocky soils. We have soils that can erode very, very quickly. And that sagebrush actually knits the soil together. They're gone in these catastrophic wildfires. They are toast. Then you look at the next level down would be the perennial bunch grasses. They also are very, very, very deep. This is basic range management. 
Um, those roots go down also and knit the soil together. In catastrophic wildfire where it burns intensely, those are gone. How does this relate to the watershed is probably the next question. So we're talking about um, soils prone to erosion. You take away these, these, um, these plants that have knitted it together and you put in these invasive grasses that have very shallow root systems. You're only talking about like an inch or two inches, very shallow. And they're producing copious amounts of seed. Um, that is not going to keep the soil together at all. So you have um, soil now that's eroding into the watershed. And that can be very detrimental to, of course, fish species, um, wildlife species. The whole system is changed. That's one of the reasons why I, I love Lake County so much is because there's a really strong natural resources community. And what I mean by that is not only the, the stewardship that the private landowners bring, I mean, the reason why we have the wide open spaces and the unfragmented landscape is because of our large landowners that have been here for multiple generations, but also because of the agency partners that are really prevalent in Lake Counties. And we utilize all of those agency partners, landowners um, to basically prioritize where we should be working, what we should be doing, and doing it in a fashion that kind of goes across those jurisdictional boundaries. Because for us, I mean, any work that can be done is good work, but it's less effective when it's in these little postage stamp efforts than that ridge top to ridge top collaboration where we can do private land, forest service, state land, um, ODFW is a big partner. Um, so everyone's bringing something to the table to ensure the best possible project is being implemented um, to benefit everyone's objectives. So there's compromises at times, but I think, you know, everyone has the landscape in their best interest. We need to ramp up, increase our pace, our scale of pre-treatment to reduce the risk of wildfire and we're hoping that these funders are going to recognize that and help us to identify that as a priority for the state, for Lake County, and for our citizens, and for our landscape and our wildlife. I mean, that all of this country is so valuable to all of our big game species, mule deer, antelope, elk, bighorn sheep. We've got game birds like chuckers and quail. Um, and then all the non-game species, you know, we've got pygmy rabbits out here and, and all the woodpeckers and owls. And I mean, it, people come to Lake County to recreate, to be in the open spaces. And if everything burns up, <laughs> there's nothing here for anyone to enjoy. Um, so I think that that is really our key, um, is to push for prioritizing these areas to increase the pace and scale of pretreatments to reduce the risk to wildfire. The last part of that, once we get, the work is never done, right? So once we get all that accomplished, hopefully, then we need to then reintroduce fire onto the landscape um, in the way of prescribed fire or controlled burns. So once the landscape is ready to receive, it's been thinned, it's been cut, it's been piled, those piles have been burned, then we want to come back in and maintain our investment with prescribed fire. And those fires need to be fairly frequent. Like maybe some places could be every eight years, some places could be every 15 years. But you come in with a low intensity burn, take care of that fine fuels and some of the new junipers because they're always going to come back and maintain the investment. Because the last thing that we want is to be back here in another 20 years dealing with the high cost of reducing the fuels again.